What if I told you that somewhere in Ukraine right now, there are tanks rolling across battlefields that look like they escaped from a post-apocalyptic movie? I'm talking about Russian tanks covered in what looks like scrap metal, wire mesh, and steel plates welded together like some kind of armored shed on tracks. These aren't movie props, these are real combat vehicles that soldiers have nicknamed turtle tanks. And they're changing modern warfare in ways nobody expected. But here's the thing that'll blow your mind. They're actually working. The shocking reality. Let me paint you a picture of what's happening on the front lines right now. Russian tank crews are literally welding together what looks like junkyard scraps to create these bizarre contraptions. We're talking steel plates, corrugated metal, wire mesh, anything they can get their hands on. The first time Ukrainian forces saw these things, they probably thought they were hallucinating. Picture this, a standard Russian tank, but covered in what looks like a giant turtle shell made of welded metal. Some of them are so covered in protective gear that soldiers started calling them rolling poultry farms because of all the cage-like structures. But here's what the mainstream media isn't telling you about these Mad Max machines. There's actual genius behind what looks like complete insanity. The science behind it. These aren't just random modifications. There's actual military science behind this apparent madness. You see, modern warfare has been completely revolutionized by something called FPV drones. First-person view drones that can carry explosives and strike with pinpoint accuracy. Traditional tank armor was designed to stop bullets and shells coming from the front, sides, and maybe above, but nobody designed them to handle swarms of small, agile drones attacking from every angle like angry wasps. So Russian engineers came up with this brilliant, if crude, solution. Create an air gap. When an explosive hits that outer shell, the blast dissipates in the empty space before it reaches the actual tank. It's like wearing a puffy winter coat in a snowball fight. The snowball hits the coat, not you. The technical term is standoff armor, and it's actually based on solid physics. The same principle is used in modern reactive armor systems, just a lot less sophisticated. Different tank variants. Now, not all turtle tanks are created equal. Russian forces have developed what military analysts are calling different marks or versions. The Mark I was basically a steel frame with plates welded on top, crude but effective. The Mark II got more sophisticated, fully enclosed shells with corrugated metal that actually looks professionally manufactured. But then there's what they call the porcupine variant. And this thing is absolutely wild. It's covered in so much cage and grill protection that it literally looks like a mobile fortress. Some of these monsters are carrying an extra five tons of protective gear. And here's where it gets really interesting. They're not just slapping this stuff on randomly. There's method to this madness. Battlefield performance. So do these things actually work? The answer might surprise you. There are documented cases of these turtle tanks surviving direct hits from cluster munitions, weapons specifically designed to destroy armored vehicles. They've led successful assault operations, withstood multiple drone attacks, and kept their crews alive in situations where conventional tanks would have been destroyed. But they're not invincible. Ukrainian forces have adapted their tactics. They're using coordinated multi-drone attacks, targeting the weak points, the tracks, the wheels, the areas where the armor can't reach. And here's something that'll give you chills. They've started using thermite drones. These things burn at over 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit and can melt through steel like butter. Imagine that heat coming at you from above. The engineering behind the madness. Now, let me show you the actual engineering genius behind these seemingly crude modifications. Russian field engineers discovered that the optimal standoff distance for defeating FPV drone warheads is between 18 and 24 inches. Too close, and the blast still damages the main armor. Too far, and the structure becomes too heavy and unwieldy. The Mark II turtle tanks use a brilliant solution. 
they've created a double layer system. The outer cage catches and detonates the drone's warhead, while an inner layer of corrugated steel deflects the remaining blast energy. It's like wearing both a bulletproof vest and a medieval chainmail. Redundant protection that covers different threat types. But here's what's really impressive. These modifications are being manufactured in field workshops using salvage materials. Tank crews are literally welding together destroyed Ukrainian vehicles, Russian supply trucks, and even civilian construction materials to create these protective shells. It's battlefield recycling on an industrial scale. And the most ingenious part, the seemingly random placement of the armor plates isn't random at all. Russian engineers have calculated the most likely attack angles based on drone approach patterns, and they're reinforcing those specific zones. What looks like desperate improvisation is actually sophisticated battlefield mathematics. The bigger picture. What we're witnessing here is something that military historians will study for decades. This is real-time battlefield evolution, measure and countermeasure happening at lightning speed. These turtle tanks represent something bigger than just Russian ingenuity. They're showing us the future of armored warfare. When your enemy adapts, you adapt back. When they find a weakness, you find a solution. Other Russian units are now copying these designs. We're seeing variations pop up across different fronts. What started as desperate field modifications is becoming standardized equipment. But here's the question that keeps military analysts awake at night. What happens when both sides start using these tactics? The global impact. Everyone's copying the homework. Here's what you terrify NATO planners. These turtle tank modifications are spreading far beyond Ukraine. Intelligence reports show similar cage armor appearing on Russian vehicles in Syria, Belarus, and even during training exercises in Siberia. What started as a desperate Ukrainian battlefield adaptation has become standard Russian doctrine. But it's not just Russia. Chinese military engineers have been studying these designs intensively. Satellite imagery shows PLA tank units experimenting with their own versions of cage armor during exercises near Taiwan. They're not just copying the design, they're improving it with advanced materials and modular systems. Even more concerning, Iranian proxy forces in the Middle East have started applying these principles to their vehicles. Hezbollah technical trucks with improvised cage armor, Hamas vehicles with welded steel protection. The turtle tank philosophy is going viral among asymmetric warfare groups worldwide. The implications are staggering. NATO forces trained to fight conventional armored units now face an entirely new category of protected vehicles. Western anti-tank weapons designed for clean armor penetration are struggling against these improvised but effective defensive systems. The turtle tanks aren't just changing the war in Ukraine, they're rewriting the global playbook for armored warfare. And speaking of weapons that are rewriting military playbooks, wait until you see what's happening with hypersonic missiles. While these turtle tanks crawl across battlefields at 30 miles per hour, there are weapons streaking through the sky at 15,000 miles per hour that make every defense system on Earth look obsolete. If you want to stay ahead of the curve on military technology and understand what's really happening in modern warfare, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell.